Hello again, I'm Braddock Supervisor John Cook. Welcome back to Braddock Neighborhood News, the program I am using to provide you with information on issues facing our community and ideas on how we can strengthen our neighborhoods. A large number of our servicemen and women return from combat and face a difficult time adjusting to their normal life. Sometimes they land in the criminal justice system when what they really need is treatment and counsel. Fairfax County is leading the way in helping our returning veterans by establishing Virginia's first Veterans Treatment Docket. The Veterans Treatment Docket helps vets who have found themselves in distress during this adjustment period by offering a pragmatic alternative to incarceration. Joining me are Robin Phillips, the Assistant Coordinator for the Veterans Treatment Docket, Don Northcutt, Veteran Mentor Coordinator, and Patty Haley, one of the veteran mentors. Robin, Don, Patty, I want to thank you all for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. This uh, idea of a veterans treatment docket is something that's being talked about nationally, being tried nationally. We're the first in Virginia. Robin, why? Why, why is this idea out there? I think the, probably the best way to think of it is that uh, there have been drug treatment, uh, drug courts uh, established nationwide. And uh, there was a sense that, uh, that uh, veterans were a special category of, of people who could use uh, a special, as you called it, pragmatic approach to, uh, to treatment. And therefore, uh, the idea was that, uh, that veterans who came in touch with the criminal justice system uh, would be uh, if they at the same time had uh, had uh, mental health issues and or and or substance uh, use issues that there could be a treatment that uh, could be used as a, as opposed uh, as opposed to going directly through the normal path in the criminal justice system right and what what we have found is in in the last decade really mm -hmm. that because of sort of the the nature of the wars in Afghanistan and, and Iraq, um, the um, the number of tours some some uh, of our service personnel have been on, the fact that there really hasn't been a front line and, and, a, and a behind the line, but you're always on over there. And with the roadside bombs and that kind of thing, the tension level, the stress, there's a lot of mental health issues, a lot of PTSD, a lot of traumatic brain injuries from the concussive force of the explosions, and that's playing out in, um, in adjustment difficulties that sometimes result in a vet committing a crime, and it's not that they're bad people, it's that they're struggling in adjusting back. Precisely, and I think that, I mean, you mentioned PTSD and traumatic brain injury, and I think that the statistics show that uh, one in six vets suffers from that sort of that sort of issue, and there's an even larger percentage that su uh, suffer from substance abuse issues. And as you pointed out, these the stressors, having been overseas and having been part of part of uh, of their work, uh, when they come back, uh, there are many of them who are not as able to take care of themselves in 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 the sort of normal way, and then fall fall through the criminal justice system. And so the idea is to try to put together something that can that can uh, that can treat them. Right, because when we think about what the criminal justice system really is supposed to be about is that if somebody sort of has the criminal mind, is committing crimes, they need incarceration, society needs punishment, needs that, but what these vets and, and others with mental illness need is treatment for the illness, and then the crime doesn't, doesn't occur, and so that's really what we're talking about here. That's right. There's a, uh, there's a cause for the behavior and the cause is related to combat service. Something happened, or a, or a number of things happened, that created uh, a mental state in which the veteran acts in a way he or she normally wouldn't. And uh, it's a problem and it's recognized and all the elements of the criminal justice system, in this case, come together to act in a collegial way rather than a prosecutorial way. And so it's a very unique uh, uh, approach to handling these problems. And Don, part of that is what you're in charge of, which is the mentoring aspect, and that is to, to connect the service personnel with someone who can be a mentor to help guide them through sort of this adjustment period. That's right. 
Uh, a veteran mentor uh, is an honorably discharged veteran who volunteers to serve uh, as support, as a resource, uh, as someone to help uh, identify sort of the speed bumps that the veteran may uh, occur or, or uh, run into during the 18 to 24 months of the program. And uh, uh, it's that unique bond between veterans that makes the mentor program work. And just so we can sort of talk about, um, and, and Robin, fill us in here on, on how it works, um, a vet is uh, arrested and there's a diversion to go right. into the program instead of going right to jail. Right, and, and, and the, the sort of a simple way of looking at it, I think, is to say that, the, that it's the veteran who comes in contact with the criminal justice system who uh, is made aware of the program and has to put, put forward that, has to volunteer, essentially, and look into the program. And then if that veteran uh, meets certain eligibility criteria, then the veteran is brought into the program and uh, signs a contract with uh, with various authorities here as part of the part of the uh, of, of the Virginia court system, the Fairfax County court system, and uh, goes through the treatment process that Don was just describing a moment ago with the the, the assistance of of course of the veteran's mentor. But the the point is that uh, that the idea is at the end of this uh, process, as the person graduates, as the veteran graduates after 18 to 24 months that uh, that uh, the statistics have shown nationwide that the extent of recidivism or return to repeating the crime is lower in the case of folks that have veterans who have been through uh, veterans treatment court systems right and the so that's the, important and the costs are in fact uh, in fact lower if one uh, for the veteran uh, the government's cost for supporting a veteran through the system right. as opposed and, to being incarcerated. Right, and part of what we're offering the veteran is that it's a diversion off of instead of a conviction, go through the program, get better, Right. Of depending course, on the crime. Veteran has to plead guilty, right. has to plead guilty at the outset, uh, but this is a diversion. Um, and uh, again, the criteria, one of the things that people ask frequently is that can anybody participate in it, but there are certain degrees of uh, types of violent crime where, uh, where that, sort of, that sort of veteran would be less likely to be accepted in the uh, program. And the program is very inclusive in that mm. the, as soon as the uh, police officer interacts with uh, the person, they'll ask them right away if they're a veteran, which will then get them introduced to the um, process of right. uh, eligibility, and, which is a really good thing. And, you know, it's interesting, Robin, you mentioned uh, the, the cost savings, and, and that comes from a few things. One, incarceration is very expensive. Yeah. Secondly, when you have a repeat, then it gets more expensive. Uh, treatment is comparatively inexpensive, as much mm -hmm. as we think that health care costs are so high, but compared to incarceration. But it's really the partnerships with mentors, and, and Patty, I wanted to ask you, you're, you're a mentor, and w from that aspect, what is it about the program that attracts you to it? Why do you want to volunteer your time? So nationally, we know that peer-to-peer -peer training is a, very strong, um, is a very strong component in recovery of veterans. So uh, as, uh, as a peer, I think that it's very important for me to give back to my fellow veterans and help them as I've adjusted back into my civilian community, help, help my fellow veteran. Also, um, it's also an opportunity for them to have someone that they can come to that's outside of the court system that they f can feel free to communicate with and share and, and then I can help connect them to resources. And Patty, talk about that a bit. As you mm -hmm. said, you, you, you returned. What, what are the types of stressors that, that, that occur when a vet's coming back from combat overseas? Well, you're really introduced to, and I think all of us have, uh, can, uh, can have this conversation. And one thing with veterans is that you can, you know, we, before the show we spoke about all of us being stationed in Okinawa at different points in time in our career. And then coming back to the community, it's a very different challenge. So just being introduced to uh, what to wear, health care costs, um, what kind of jobs to get, how to write a resume, uh, you know, how, to, how do I have conversations with other, uh, other people in my community and, and how do I fit in, all of those uh, components will uh, be part of the transition back into the community. 
One of the things that, that, that I understand from some of the people I've talked to about this is, you know, when you're, when you're, especially when you're overseas, you're in combat, and of course, you're, the, the mentality is, you know, you've got to, you're part of a team, and you've got to get through what you're, you know, so mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're suppressing and holding down uh, any fears and the obvious fears and other things. Then you come home and uh, it's a v immediately a very different environment. And, and that's, it's not easy to just immediately sort of open up and say, hey, I need to talk about some things to people who maybe don't understand. So talk about that adjustment. Well, also uh, during active military service, uh, many people feel that seeking uh, mental health assistance while you're on active duty is a career killer. Right. And so they avoid that. And once, uh, uh, once a veteran, um, identifying or, or admitting to the stressors that you've uh, been subjected to and the, uh, perhaps the mental health problems you have, um, doesn't seem like the right thing to do for many people. I ought to be able to man up and just handle this by myself, but it, that's not the case in reality. And so, and also finding uh, uh, mental health uh, providers who really understand and uh, uh, appreciate what the veteran has done and what the combat experience uh, uh, means is difficult. And many veterans don't trust people who haven't experienced that. And even, you know, the, the concept of trust, when you've been in an environment, especially overseas, where anybody that you run into who's not in a military uniform on your mm -hmm. side is potentially somebody with a bomb or somebody going to do something, and now you're put into a society where you're sort of expected to, on a daily basis, meet people you've never met before and open up to them and talk to them, just that adjustment in how to, to deal with people if you've had a very traumatic experience overseas, can be very hard. Mm -hmm. And I think I think one of the the good aspects of the program, attractive aspects of the program, uh, can be that it provides a structure for the for the veteran that that may be a little bit at sea. Because by definition, if they have committed a crime and they have the, the either the mental health issues or the substance issues that that make them eligible for the program, they really uh, they really are going to need some guidance. And I think that the program provides the guidance, provides the guidance through treatment. Uh, there are sort of self-help aspects to it. There's the there's the veterans mentor part of it, and there's the there's the there's actually every there's a, every other week the veteran that is part of the program, the participant in the program, will meet uh, with other with other veterans that are in the program and with the judge will come down actually to the courthouse and have a meeting and there will be there will be uh, some some sense of what's gone on for the preceding two weeks. So it'll add a structure to life which is which is getting at some of the issues you were just mentioning a moment ago, I think. Yeah, and a structure, talk about the treatment a bit, because what we know is in jail there's not going to be much treatment. Right. The, the, the treatment itself uh, will be different for different participants. But generally speaking, we mentioned a moment ago, I think Don mentioned, that it's 18 to 24 months, the, the program itself. And there are three phases to the program. One of them is, is one, as one might imagine, a sort of orientation stabilization piece that will be a few months. And then there's the, the middle of the program, which might be a year or more, and then a sort of uh, re-entry, re return to return to regular life sort of um, part of the program. And uh, I think that, uh, that, that if one thinks of the program as having very regular treatment kind of either group or individual uh, therapy, and uh, of course, a, a lot of this, a lot of the, the folks will be, most of them uh, will, be, uh, will be eligible for Veterans Department of Veterans Affairs type treatment. And they're a big component of the program as well. And, and also factor into the kind of cost that, that you may have been referring to a moment ago, because that's a federal cost. The, the, the veteran will have earned that right by uh, his or her service in the, in the military. And therefore, the, the, the treatment components and then the working with the, with the uh, veteran mentor to, uh, to uh, try to put some structure into life is a very important aspect. And there, there are guidelines that go along with that. And the oversight by the court, mm -hmm. just so that nobody misunderstands and thinks that, oh, sort of, you're getting off, you're not, because 
you're coming back in front of that judge who is a circuit court judge sure and on a regular basis and the judge is saying so you're going yep. to your appointment so you're taking your medicine or you're you're meeting with your mentor and if they're not you can be booted out of the program right and right. process the commonwealth attorney's office is there uh, the 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 defense will be there. There will be different pieces of, as you're suggesting or saying, of the of the uh, court system that will be there to make sure that it, it isn't something that slips through the cracks. So it, it's not a way of getting home free. Yeah, probation sure. is uh, providing supervision, mm -hmm. right. and so all the aspects of the criminal justice system are still there. They're just functioning in a completely different manner. And this, uh, this docket that we're establishing in the Fairfax Circuit Court is the first here in Virginia, but nationally we're seeing these uh, dockets or courts mm -hmm. uh, around the country and uh, justiceforvets.org, uh, which uh, is the, part of the national movement for this. Mm -hmm. And Patty, talk a little bit about that, about how you got sort of, how you found out about the program that, uh, and what you know of it. I did a fellowship program with uh, The Mission Continues, and through that I worked with Don at the uh, through the through the workshops over the summer and the development and the Justice for Vets is a very comprehensive program that provides support to the judge and all of the judge's staff and how to develop a program uh, that would um, that is both at the uh, at a very high standard but also takes in account all of the needs of uh, Fairfax County so that it mm -hmm. suits the community so it's a very comprehensive program yeah. And really what it's designed to do is form a team for the veteran, as you were saying about uh, finding structure for the veteran. This is a team that is designed that the veteran can su succeed. And, and Don, we've seen this work other places. Oh, yes. Uh, as part of our training with uh, Justice for Vets, <coughs> uh, uh, the core, there's a core team of uh, about 15 of us. Uh, and we went to Rochester, New York to observe their, uh, their veterans court. And we observed uh, how they handle the interaction, uh, their processes, and uh, came back uh, um, very encouraged by this to see how powerfully it works. And that, re that interaction between the veteran standing before the judge and the judge. And after a while, they know each other. Unlike most defendant judge relationships, they know each other and they have a conversation about what's going on. And that's what we seek to replicate here. And I think just to follow on, to add to that a little bit, um, there, there, are, there are about a little over 200 of these uh, veterans treatment courts in the country. And the first one was, uh, was in 2008 up in Buffalo, New York. And uh, Justice for Vets, the group that you mentioned and that Don said had helped pull this together here in Fairfax County, um, uh, provided, uh, have provided information and given us, given us the way of pulling it together so that we didn't have to sort of take off and do it all on our mm -hmm. own. So it's, it's useful to have that, that, uh, that sort of additional, that, ad yeah. that additional support, I think. Yeah. They ha Justice for Vets has a uh, annual conference, and this year it's in July in Washington, D.C., and part of that is what's called uh, Mentor Boot Camp, and it is mm -hmm. uh, a national-level training for mentors. And through the generosity of BAE, BAE Systems, uh, our program was awarded a, a grant to send 25 mentors uh, to the training in July. And uh, that, that's going to be, a, I think, a major boost to uh, our ability uh, to, to provide services to the uh, mentors, and to as, the veterans. As a mentor, I feel like that's a really good way that I'll be best prepared and I'll have knowledge about best practices across the country and the mm -hmm. support of a really um, good organization. I think that's an important point because this is not intuitive. It's not mm -hmm. like you just say, I think I'll be a mentor today and go out. I mean, we all, you know, try to help, help out yeah. friends and those. But, uh, uh, Patty, you know, we're talking about training and really um, and, and learning some of the specific skills because it's going to be a difficult task. Mm -hmm. it, absolutely. I think that uh, the way that Don has constructed the, the mentor program that will have overlap, um, given that all, all volunteers have uh, obligations in their own lives, that we've taken, taken care of those aspects up front, that there's training in place, 
that we're all meeting one another and there's a great diverse group of veterans. I think it's a great program, so if someone's interested in volunteering, mm -hmm. this is a great way to start in Fairfax County uh, right off the bat in Virginia. I, I often get that, well, what do I do mm -hmm. as a mentor? Um, at its basic, um, your support, uh, you're honest about who you are and, and you're just absolutely honest with the veteran. And I, we, I think I know all of us through our military experience, we've known when someone is being honest with us, legitimate mm -hmm. with us, whether it's a superior or a subordinate, we know. And if someone is honest with you, it helps to build that relationship. And uh, uh, that's the part of it. You, you learn to be a mentor by being a mentor. And it's that, that simple. We can have all sorts of courses and training, but it's building that relationship between two people uh, <clears throat> that is difficult to teach. It's just something that has to come about. And I suspect being, uh, being honest, as you say, sometimes it's being there helpful and supportive, and maybe sometimes it's to say, hey, you know, straighten someone out, out a bit and That's say, right. look, you gotta, I got to pull you back. Yeah. Mentors are not counselors. Uh, we're not therapists, and we're not uh, not drill instructors. Uh, but we are there to, I think, to be honest and to say, you know, this is what this case is. You need help. We can help you find it. You know, that's a good distinction. And, and Robin, maybe yeah. you can talk about that. The difference between mental health treatment from a mental health professional and mentoring, and talk about why those are different and, and what the different things are that we're looking for. Well, I think that I think that what we're uh, we're looking for uh, a more formal sort of counseling, mental health treatment, and that was what I referred to earlier is primarily coming from the from the Veterans Affairs Department uh, for for most of the participants in the program. But at the same time, it will be it will be important, uh, we think, for the participants in the program to have someone else, someone like Don and Patty are suggesting, who will be a friend, but also be able to be be tough, but also supportive, and someone who has uh, someone who has been either through the same kind of issues, uh, maybe not to the same degree that, that the participants have, but is someone that um, will, the thought is, be more trustworthy for the participants themselves. But the treatment part of it is, is, is actually extremely important and, uh, and, and, is, and is something that will be tailor-made for each of the participants, because each of them, as you suggest, will have different kinds of issues and will need to, be, need to have different types of treatment. And uh, the reference that, that Don made to, uh, to being tough and, or being friendly and being tough at the same time is mirrored in the program itself, because the, the, whichever judge is presiding at a given session of this court, will, uh, when each uh, participant comes up and explains what they have done in the preceding two weeks, the judge has incentives or sanctions that can be applied. So it can either be tough or be uh, tough in a supportive way or be supportive in a, in a, in a uh, rewarding kind of way to the participant itself. So it, it's, a, it's a very delicate balance and it will be different for each of the participants. It's going to be a very personalized program as we see it. Mm -hmm. It sounds a little bit like the role of the mentor is a little bit like AA and sort of a confidential there is, relationship at least. Mm. There is that sort of feeling to it except to be a mentor there's no requirement as in AA that you have actually been through the program. Uh, to, to be a sponsor in AA, you're a right. member of AA, you've been through the program. Yeah, so that's not a requirement. I will be very happy two years from now if a veteran goes through right. the program and it says, I want to be a mentor. Right. That, that will mean success. And I assume there is, though, that sort of idea of confidentiality for oh, yes. a, a mentor. And, and, and Patty, I would think that if you're going to be mentoring somebody, you, part of the establishing trust is that, that that person can come to you, even if they screw up again and say, hey, what do I do and how do I fix it? And, and to know that you're in their corner. Absolutely. If if that doesn't exist, then the relationship doesn't uh, doesn't exist at all. So the mentor's position is to be a voice, um, you know, the the strong voice or the soft voice in the 
person's ear to support them, and that has to be a voice that they can hear, so it has to be one that they can trust. So it's a very important aspect uh, in the relationship between the mentor. So, so, the, the, so the treatment's important, the structure of having the judge oversee it's important, and then the role of the, the mentor and, and having somebody there in your corner and volunteering to help. And we could mm -hmm. talk about this a whole lot more, but we're out of time. I want to thank Robin, Don, and Patty for coming on the show to talk about this important program. We want to continue to support those brave service members who have put their lives on the line to ensure our freedoms and way of life. If you'd like more information on the national program, go to justiceforvets.org. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of Braddock Neighborhood News. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or other needs, please contact my office at 703-425-9300 or email braddock at fairfaxcounty.gov. Tune in next month for another edition and please remember to look for ways to volunteer. Your community needs you.